Hi, I'm Blair Gilbert, here for Gilbert's Pro Hardware in St. Clair Shores, Michigan and MrHardware.com. Do a little dissertation about sump pumps. They usually last four to eight years. Water comes down the wall, accumulates, goes to a sump pit. Water accumulates in here, gets higher, pump kicks on. There's a check valve in here. It only lets water go one way and the water pumps out on the yard. Hopefully that water is discharged six to ten feet away from the house. If I have a very expensive basement where I have a lot of improvements and things out there and, my, and I'm in a wet area so my pump runs often, more than four times an hour, I'll take, I'll throw a cinder block in my sump pit and I'll put a second pump on top of the cinder block. That pump will discharge out and I'll use a Y, a PVC Y, this is usually all plumbed in PVC, and I'll run a PVC Y, and I'll take, I need another check valve. The reason I need a check valve for each pump is, when this pump runs, the water will come back down through this sump pump if I don't have a check valve on it. So these both have a check valve. So anytime either one runs, they both run separately. So if this pump ever fails, and the water gets up higher, over the top of this pump, then the second pump kicks on and it picks up where the first pump has failed. Now, when I have two sump pumps in a pit and I have one, sump, one pump that's a cinder block higher than the other, the lower pump does all the work. The secondary pump rarely even comes into play. If it's a huge thunderstorm or a pile of water, then possibly both pumps could kick on and the two pumps together may save the day. So, Whenever you stack the pumps up, the a higher one, hopefully, never comes into play other than the fact that it's there waiting for the lower pump to fail. This is a good time to get a water alarm. It is like a smoke alarm, comes with a sensor, a little wire, some are wireless, there's a lot to choose from there. And I put an alarm on this pipe right about this height. And I bring the alarm up and out of the pit and I put it on the wall. And then if the water ever gets as high enough for the second pump to kick on, the alarm goes off. Eee! We run downstairs, we see that the lower pump has finally failed. So what we do, we take this pump, and once the water's under control, we pull the dead pump out, we take the secondary pump, we put it in the low part of the pit, it becomes our primary pump. Now I got a week or two weeks before I go out and buy a new secondary pump and I reinstall the secondary pump. This is a two pump system. Terrific. Kind of keeps us out of, out of trouble. Now what I'm going to talk about now is what happens if the electric power goes out? There's a power failure. Oh no, what are we going to do? Well there's two ways to address this thing. One is over here is a battery operated sump pump. A third float if you have two pumps, an additional float up higher, you need to use a deep cycle battery. This is a battery like what I'd use for my trolling motor, or I'd use it for my motor home, because a deep cycle battery is designed to go all the way down to zero. The battery backup system does come with a battery tender, which is a charger that will take and maintain your battery. The only problem is, is anytime you take a battery and you put it in your basement, five years from now, you forget all about it. This battery could be gone dead, it could be out of acid, there could be all kinds of problems. You don't know when that battery's gotten tired and given up the ghosts. Depending on how much water it's pumping, it's going to pump for six to eight hours. It's not going to pump for two days. It's going to be all done at the end of the first day. So if this is a long-term power outage, the battery backup isn't always the best choice. That's when I started thinking about looking towards the water backup system. A water backup sump pump kind of cool because most of us have unlimited water. When our city, when things go wrong around here, we've never run out of water pressure. So a water backup pump might not pump as many gallons per minute, although it's darn close, it'll pump it all day long. So what happens is this pump goes in the pit, it's got a float valve, you set the float valve so it is above the level of your regular sump pump. So when the water level comes up too high, this is a lot of times set up right near the very top of a sump pit. Here's a sump pit here. I might have this set way the heck up here. So it's not until the water's within a foot of the top of my pit before that clicks on. 
So this gets hooked up to, here's the inconvenience part, you got to bring a three quarter inch water supply over to here. Usually put a ball valve right in front of it so that you can kill this, work on it if anything ever fails, you need to check it out. Water comes in here, goes through the siphon, and then out and discharges, just like your other sump pumps, outside the house. Now what I like to do with a water backup pump, I don't like to plumb this in with my electric pumps. The reason being is when this comes on, something went wrong. Now if it's because the electricity went down, it's not an issue. You know why it's running. But if all is good with the world and this pump is running, what I do when I have, say, two sump pumps in here, when I put in, if I put in a water backup pump, I pump it up over, I keep it with the other plumbing, but I pump it out separate. I have a splash block out here or something. So when this pump runs and I see it running, I come home from work and I see water out on my sidewalk or wherever this baby's discharging at. I know, oh goodness, I better go downstairs and check out my pumps. Water's coming out on my lawn where it normally never does. So if you plumb this in separately, that's your early warning indicator that something else has gone wrong. Unless, of course, the power is all out. I put one of these in for my father-in-law. It ran so efficiently because we plumbed it, we were in a condominium complex. I couldn't punch a hole in the wall and just throw it out on a patio. The complex wouldn't allow me. So I had to plumb it in with the check valve and with the other plumbing system. So it worked just fine. Problem is, my father-in-law's pumps broke and he didn't know it until he got a $300 water bill. Got a $300 water bill because this baby was running, doing a job perfectly. Basement was dry, the water backup pump worked all month. So when we plumb it outside, we want to see it plus. If our electric system is plumbed into any kind of drain field or anything, if anything freezes or clogs or a mole gets in there and clogs the system, these pumps might be running but they won't be moving any water. Your water backup pump will kick on and you'll see it running. You'll be alerted, plus the fact that it's on its own exit out of your house, you get a clear view that something went wrong. So water backup or electric backup pumps should be plumbed out separate, not tied in with your 110 volt systems. This pump will kick on in as little as three quarters of an inch of water and it'll pump down to a quarter inch of water and it does it automatically. The only problem is, is it checks for water every two and a half minutes. So when this is plugged in, every two and a half minutes this pump kicks on, checks for water, has no load, says, oh, no water here and it turns off. Well. We were testing it just a little while ago. It's a little bit crazy. It does run every two and a half minutes for five seconds. So I don't know if I'm in love with this pump as a permanent backup. This pump is going to be terrific for those of you with a slab utility room or a back slab in your house where water is getting in the house and the slab is so low you can't hardly do anything about it. This pump during a rainfall or during a wet spring may be just the ticket to keep that back porch or that back patio dry. So it's, it's goofy, it uses electricity constantly because it's checking all the time every two and a half minutes. And, uh, but it does work well, it goes down to zero, it's a little expensive, it's over $150. But the little baby does the job. So that's all I got to say about sump pumps for today. Any questions? 